Hello, it's Erica here from Me Too Paper Crafts, and I'm coming to you with another card video. This is a fun fold card, and uh, this one was um, from Connie Stewart. I saw she did a card uh, like this in Calypso Coral, I believe were her colors. I caught that, I think, this week or last week. And this card uses the scalloped tag topper punch to create this unique uh, fold where you tie it up with a bit of ribbon and then you open it up and then you have your card inside. Isn't it cute? Just love that. So we're going to make one. I'm going to change up the colors this time and um, we're going to use Seaside Spray. I just love this color. This is such a pretty, pretty blue. Okay, so I always write a blog post for my Fun Fold Fridays, so it will tell you everything you need to know about this card, and it will give you all of the measurements so that you don't have to worry about writing anything down, and I do that just so that video isn't too long. So the stamp set I'm going to use the exact same one that Connie used because it just it just looked too beautiful and it looked really pretty in Calypso Coral but you could make this card in any color you want it would be very pretty to make a set of cards as well in you know say four different colors so the stamp set is called Floral Essence I absolutely love this stamp set because I love the flowers and we have a punch that goes with it and the punch let me just pull that down for you we have this punch is called the perennial flower punch and so you basically stamp this a couple of times and punch it a couple of times and then you mount one on top of another for a very pretty flower you could even stamp several of them to build up the flower so this make, makes a beautiful beautiful um, card and um, this leaf actually uh, coordinates with a leaf punch, which is now retired, but it came out with a different stamp set. And then often they carry over an image to continue using with the punches. And then eventually the punch goes. So when you see something that coordinates really well, my advice is always to purchase it. Um, and then you can keep those stamp sets with the coordinated punches and have them in your stash for future use. Okay, so we're not going to use the punch for this today, but I've already mounted up my stamps on my blocks with the greeting. And the only thing I forgot to cut, that was silly of me, is a piece of the uh, silver. See, on this one I backed it with some silver foil. The reason for that is because the ribbon has some silver edging to it. So let me go and cut that and I'll be right back. All right, so I've got my silver foil piece here and this piece of Whisper White is going to mount on top of that after I've stamped it. Now before I get into any of the stamping or creating the card, um, I want to talk to you about um, coloring your ribbon. So we have this wonderful ribbon. It is our um, it's called a silver, it's a whisper white with a metallic edge in silver. So we have it in white with silver edge and we also have it in very vanilla with a gold edge. These are two ribbons, I mean these are two ribbons that you could use for any card project. And what I love about them is that you can color them with your blends. Okay, so we're going to actually do that first because even though alcohol does dry quicker than say a water-based ink, um, it still takes a little time to dry because you're saturating the ribbon. So I have some scrap paper here just to protect my work surface and I have the um, Seaside Spray blends and I'm going to start with the lighter color just to see if I like that shade on the ribbon or you could always use the darker shade so it's up to you which shade you want to use. Um, there are two ends to a blend. There is the brush end and then there is what I call the bullet end and I mostly use this bullet end for all of my coloring and then the brush end is useful for other fine tip sort of coloring but I like to use the blush end for the ribbon so I've already cut a piece this project takes 
about 15 inches of ribbon. And the beauty, the beautiful thing about blends is that um, you it'll saturate the ribbon, so you only have to color the one side. Okay, so I'm going to start by just starting the color at this end, then I can hold it. And then I'm just going to gently... You don't want to press too hard on the blend tip. I'm just going to very gently spread the color along the length of the ribbon. Very simple to do. I've already used this coloring technique on several pieces of this ribbon for my projects and I've not been disappointed with any color. I think it's worth having both the silver edged and the gold edged for different projects. Some colors just lend themselves beautifully with gold and some with silver. So for example, the card that Connie Stewart did in Calypso Coral, it was just gorgeous with gold. So she had a piece of gold foil and then the gold edged ribbon which she had colored with Calypso Coral. It was just very beautiful. All right, so I'm going to set aside my ribbon to dry. And now I can start um, stamping. Now, because my um, the stamps that I'm using are the photopolymer, which means that they're clear all the way through, and unlike our rubber stamps, they do not have any sponge underneath it. And so you do need a spongy surface for stamping on. You get a much better image when you use a sponge surface. Now unfortunately we do not sell this piercing mat anymore but we have this silicone mat which I always recommend for all of your gluing needs and I use it all the time. Um, this provides some sponginess to it and so you can use this if you don't have a piercing mat. Okay. Alright, so I'm going to pull out my um, blue, my seaside spray color, and I'm going to make the exact same design just because I think it turned out beautifully. So there's about four flowers on there, so I'm going to ink it up, and I'm going to do one at the top. And I want to hold my stamp to the cardstock to let that color saturate in there. Here's my second one. Third one. This is how you create pattern paper. You could do a whole sheet of Whisper White adding these flowers as well as the leaves and then you could cut it up to make a card or several cards. Okay, so that's the flower. Now I'm also going to build up the inside of my card at the same time. You see on this card I just did a flower in the top left hand corner. It made for a nice surprise when somebody opens up the card. So we'll do another flower up here on the top. Let's just set this aside. Try and do all your stamping at one time. And even while I'm at it, I'm going to grab an envelope. And do my envelope at the same time. So I'm going to place one of the flowers along the bottom here. And then I think it would be really, really pretty to have a flower on the flap right here. Wouldn't you love to get a flower? or sorry, an envelope in the mail that's decorated like that. 
All right, so that's all the blue that I need. So I'm going to put that away and I'm going to pull out my green. I'm going to use my favorite green, which is Pear Pizzazz. And we'll do several leaves. Now these leaves are just an outline and so you could choose to color them with some blends to fill them in. If you chose to. I think they're very pretty with the um, outline. Okay, and then let's do this piece. I'm going to put the leaves where there's some white spots on the card. Like so. Okay. That's all the green that we need. Now there is a center to this flower, so you could choose to either color that in, um, or you can use this tiny little stamp, and I'm going to stamp this in the So Saffron ink color. It's very, very pale, kind of a buttery yellow. And you want to watch how you line this stamp up. There's definitely a way to stamp it. I'm just going to stamp the center of that flower. Look how pretty that is. stamp my envelope. There we go. Oh, I just love the way stamps, this is why I'm just, I just love this stamping craft and card making. It's just what the beautiful, beautiful designs of the stamps. It really makes you feel like you're an artist. So pretty. Okay, all right, now I'm going to show you how to make the card base. It's a little bit different than what you're used to. First of all, when you cut your card base, which is five and a half by eight and a half, it's basically half a full sheet of cardstock. The important thing is not to score it. We have a tendency to score it right away down the middle to create a car regular card base. But for this one, you're not going to do that. What we're going to do is we're going to bring out our uh, scallop tag topper punch. Okay. Now this is set up so that this channel here fits about a two inch piece of cardstock. When you cut your cardstock, you want to cut off a smidge less than two inches, and it slides right in up until the, it can't go in anymore. And if you look on the back, it will butt up against the straight edge here, and then you just stamp it. Now, of course, this is not two inches wide, so we have to sort of force it in there, and it will go. You're just going to wiggle it and get it in there. And then you want to line it up along an edge, and this was Connie Stewart's great trip, is just, you know, put it onto the table like that to make sure that the cardstock is down on the table, okay? And then you're going to flip it, gently flip it back, okay? And then you're going to punch it, okay? So you want to match now the other side, 
make sure you do them across from each other. You're going to do the exact same thing. Just kind of w wiggle it in there like that. And again, you're going to tap it on the table to make sure that it's in there flat. Okay, like that. And then gently rotate it over again. And then give it a punch. Okay, so now you have two um, scalloped topper edges. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to trim off this additional cardstock. We need to get rid of this little piece and we need to get rid of this little piece. So what you do is pull in your trimmer. And I'm going to line the trimmer up along this bottom edge just so I can see it and keep it in view better. Let's move out some of this stuff out of the way. Okay, hopefully you can see that at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my cutting blade. So I'm positioning, just so you can see, I'm positioning uh, these two um, ends right, lining it up right with that inside channel of the track. That's what I'm doing. Lining it right up in there. Okay. And then you are going to take your uh, blade and push it up. Can you see that on here? I'm not sure if you can see this. Here you go. So I've lined up those two little notches inside the track here. And I'm just going to push this up gently. And you will feel the blade just release. It, it, it will drag through the cardstock and then it will just release when it gets to that open notch. And then you want to stop. So see, it, it kind of jumps into that free space. Okay. And look, it just took off that little tiny bit. Okay, and you're going to do the exact same thing. Take your cutting blade to the top here because you want to go from the outside of the card down into that little notch. So again, you are going to just pull down, go gently, and you'll feel it release. There it goes. It kind of jumped. Okay. What you don't want to do is try and line your blade up where the little notch is and then go out. So I'm going to rotate this and do the exact same thing. So again, I'm lining up that little tiny notch. I want to be able to see the inside of the track. Again, I'm going to go from the bottom up and it's going to drag through and you'll feel it release. Go slow. There it goes. You'll feel it. Okay, and then I'm going to pull this down to the bottom and do the same thing. Just line it up. There it goes. It releases. And you should get a really nice cut when you do it that way. All right, now the second step is we need to score these tabs so that they fold in, okay? So again, line it up, get the cardstock butted up right against that track in there. And now take, make sure you put your blade out of the way and then take your scoring blade and score that tab. Turn it over and do the same thing. There you go. Okay. And then the next thing you want to do is you're going to line this up at four and a quarter inches. So before you make your final score to fold your card more or less in half, I want you to, we scored these two flaps and then you want to fold these and that this is what's determining the, um, the right and the wrong side of your card. So this is going to fold in like this to meet it. All right. 
So you want to flip it over and then you're going to line it up on this side at four and a quarter here. What this will do is ensure that you're actually folding it on the what we call the mountain side. So give that a score at four and a quarter. Okay. Did I do that right? No, I didn't do that right because now my ties are at the bottom. But you know, you can have the ties at the bottom or you can have the ties at the top. So if you want them at the top, then you're just going to flip it over this way. Like this, okay? So I thought I calculated that right, but I obviously didn't. I don't think it really matters. Just determine which is the right side. Now I'm going to be looking at this card in more detail here before I continue because I don't know if you can see that, but I didn't quite cut that edge right there. So I'm just going to take my paper snips and clean that up a little bit. I just missed that little tiny edge. and I'm just going to snip that off. There we go. That looks better. Alright, so my card's going to fold this way and meet in the middle. Now I'm going to take out my bone folder and I'm going to give that a nice crease there and I will crease my little flaps here. Okay, really in retrospect only one flap had to be scored and folded. We could have left this one without a score mark in there but that's okay. This is why I always advise my viewers to watch the video all the way to the end so that you can see any little mistakes or tips along the way so that you have a smoother uh, project conclusion. Now where's my little silver piece? Here we go. So I'm going to just mount this silver piece or this uh, floral piece on top of my silver piece. So try and get an even border all the way around. And orient your flowers the right way before you mount it on your card. Just going to add a little bit more in that corner. Now you have quite a wide border on the left and right of this strip, so you could rejig your paper if you don't want quite as wide a border. Just make this silver foil piece a little bit bigger and so on and so forth. It's totally up to you. Look how pretty that looks. Now for the inside of the card, I'm going to be mounting this in here. Now, I always like to stamp before I stick this inside my card, but what I want to do is I want to make sure I know where to stamp the greeting because I want you to notice on my prototype here, I stamped it without doing a measurement and so I can't see this full greeting here. You see how it overlaps a little bit and I want to be able to see that full greeting. So I'm going to position this in where it's going to go. I'm going to pull this flap over and all I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a pencil and I'm just going to mark a little pencil mark here. That's it. Okay, now get out my black ink and my greeting. And now I can make sure my grading is in the right spot. There we go. 
and then I can erase that little pencil mark. And now I can glue this to the inside of my card. So here's my frustration. I haven't been able to get my hair cut. And you won't believe how long it is. I mean, it's way past my shoulders now. And um, even if I wear it up, I find long hairs everywhere. And it's starting to drive me crazy. So luckily for me, my hairdresser because I've known her for many, many, many years, and I have told her I'm not keen on going into the into her shop and wearing a mask for four hours, because I also need it dyed, um, she's agreed to come to my house, which is so sweet of her. Um, although she's not sure she can actually dye my hair, because she often has to mix up more dye because I have so much hair she's not you know she won't be able to bring those bottles out of the hair salon so I may just get it cut and then I'll have to probably go into the salon and get it dyed but even dyeing my hair takes hours and hours and I just don't think I can sit with a mask on the whole time I'm okay going into a shop for a short period of time, but sitting for three or four hours. Because also, when she dyes my hair, she puts a plastic bag over my head. I think I'll just be sweltering, and I won't be able to handle that. So, we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so let's pull back our ribbon now, because our card is basically finished. What do you think? I think it's just very, very pretty. I love this color. Now, one thing to note is that once you've um, colored your ribbon with these blends, the ribbon gets a little bit more stiff than its original state. So I just sort of draw it through my fingers just to make it a little bit more pliable. Connie had another suggestion in another one of her videos where she just dragged this through a dryer sheet. Well, I don't use dryer sheets. I have some old used ones because it, they were used for a card making technique. So I have a bag of old ones in my drawer, but I don't know. I just find them a little on, on the smelly side. Okay, so I just manipulate it with my hands. Okay, and then I'm going to thread this through and tie a bow. So when I tie a bow, the key to getting straight um, loops is to make sure your ribbon goes up and down like this. Okay? And then I grab the bottom, make my loop. I put my middle finger on the knot. And I pull this top one around from the back. And then through. And look how beautiful that knot is. And then you just want to adjust your loops. And there's your beautiful bow. Okay, and then you could trim it a little. I don't like to trim it off too much because the recipient wants to open, of course, and close, um, close the card. So if you cut it too short, and I want to pull out my fabric scissors, if you cut the ties too short, they won't be able to do that. Now this one's a little bit frayed, so I just I'm going to trim that one. So like, don't cut them off short because they won't be able to then tie the bow back. So that's an important thing to re remember when you're doing treat bags. Alright, so there we have our card. Let me just pull back this first one. I'm really sad that I made a, a stamping 
image. I could um, take this cardstock off the inside and um, redo it. And I'm going to show you the tool that I use for that. So this is how my ribbon would be looking. So let's show you the result of these two cards. There we go. Is that not pretty or what? It, the ribbon does it, don't you think? Beautiful. And I might take some Wink Estella and just put a little bit of Wink Estella in the centers. Now what I wanted to show you on this is how you get that piece of cardstock off. Okay. We have a tool called the uh, Take a Pick, Take Your Pick tool. So we no longer sell um, this little what we call the pokey. This was a paper piercing tool that um, you could purchase along with that foam mat for paper piercing. That was sort of an in thing to do in past years, but we don't have this anymore. So, and we also don't have the original dye brush, the one that you rub over your papers after you've used an intricate dye. So Stampin' Up! came with this um, all round um, tool. I'm sorry, I should have turned off my phone. So this is your take a pick tool. And um, it comes with this uh, putty head, which is used to pick up your embellishments. So if you wanted to pick up some sequins, it's got this little putty edge to it. And when the putty runs out, you can actually get a replacement for that. And it basically just twists out or unscrews. See? And you just replace that head in there. Okay? And then the other end also pops out. You just twist it and it pops out. So on one end is the new pokey tool. I'm too close to the camera, I'm sorry. The pokey tool and then this is the tool that I'm going to talk to you about. It's the spatula. It's a very, very fine edge spatula and I absolutely adore this. This is the best tool ever. Because what you can do with this, because it's so thin, you just want to get it under a corner okay now this will not work if you've used Tombow glue I'm sorry but Tombow dries very strong and it will not work on Tombow glue but it will use it will work for um, tape runner and just be very gentle and get it underneath the tape and that's why when I put my tape runner on I don't put gobs on I just you know I don't even run it the full length or the width of the card. Okay, I don't put that much on just for this reason that I can just slide this under here. So just go gentle and eventually it will release. Another trick I learned is if this doesn't re release that easily, you can take your heat tool and just heat underneath to soften up the adhesive and then use this tool and it will release very easily. So I don't care if I ruin this white piece, but I don't want to ruin the card base. Okay, so you see how this is lifting off now. We have one last side to do. Yeah, this could have done with a bit of heating, I think. but just take your time and it is doable because you don't want to ruin the whole card. I just want to redo this insert. There we go. Okay, so you might have a few rough edges on the inside, but that's okay. And you can remove these again with your um, 
that eraser, this eraser, mine's really old and grody looking, but this is the adhesive eraser, which we also do not sell anymore, unfortunately. Um, but you can pick this up at the dollar store, and if you just rub along the cardstock, you can get rid of any of these pieces so it's not too lumpy when you put in your new your new insert. So I will just redo this to do my greeting properly. Okay, so there's a couple of tips for you throughout the video that you can use. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoy this card. I think it's just a very pretty card. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to subscribe to my YouTube channel, you are more than welcome to do that. There's going to be a link below to my blog post and to my blog, which you can also subscribe to. Um, and you will get, um, anytime I post something, you will get notified by email. And if you click the little bell for the YouTube um, piece of it, then you will get notification that I've just released another video. So stay tuned for next Friday's Fun Fold. And every now and then I throw in another video during the week um, of another project. And just to let you know, I am going live on Facebook, on my Facebook page called From Me To You Paper Crafts. I go live on Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturday mornings. And it's just free sessions, crafting sessions. You're welcome to join. But you need to head on over to that Facebook group uh, or that business page and then join my group. The group is called From Me To You Paper Crafters and um, there's a group of people that um, come together and we all craft together. The day before typically I'll send you, it's kind of a surprise card, you don't really know what you're making but I send you the measurements and what you will need to do that project. So I've been having lots of fun doing that so I, I hope you join me. And I'm done now. Thank you so much. Bye for now.